everyone, welcome back to my channel, Relapse Tackle. I'm going to be painting up some of these three quarter ounce stand up football heads with the Stardust. Got my Teflon pins to keep the paint out of the hole for the fiber weed guard. Got my oven heating up, and a lot of people are like, Why are you using an oven? You have Stardust, you don't need an oven. Well, sometimes it is a little faster. So. So I'm just gonna get that cool on the rack. I misspoke a couple times in the video right before this, so I restarted. That's why there was already a couple of them hanging up there. I don't need to be getting the wrong information out there, so. can use a fluid bed, you don't need a fluid bed, you don't need an oven, I just prefer to use them, or use the oven to uh, heat these up and get, get the final heat put into the paint so that it gets nice and shiny. You could try to watch the whole video. I don't know how long it's going to be because obviously I'm just getting into it. Um, this color is the green pumpkin green, and this is the green pumpkin brown. Be careful so you do not burn yourself in the torch if you're using a torch. I guess you got to move some things away from the oven. Got about before I have a fire. The top of it gets very hot. The jig clamps I have sitting up there are going to get nice and toasty. So I have to be careful so I don't burn myself when I grab those. So just drop it in the paint, push it around, make sure it's all coated. And then I showed in the video kind of how I put this jig rack together. If you want to check that out, go ahead and check the video out. Tell me what you think. These jig clamps that I'm going to be using are from TJ Tackle. I believe um, there's a few other places that they can be purchased. I don't know offhand though. So I get these hot to the point where the lead starts to get kind of shiny. So you put quite a bit of heat into it. And then I put them up here to cool. And I have the oven preheating to 400 degrees. away from me so I don't burn myself on it because now I'm going to go back and pull these Teflon pins out after the paint's cooled down a little bit. So that I know the, the paint is sticking to the lid pretty good and not sticking to those Teflon pins at all. They are sticking a little bit. Just let them sit just a little bit longer. This one's pretty warm yet. See, so this one just started the the paint just started to swirl when I picked it out of there, but there's still a lot that is sticking in the lid. 
So now I'm gonna do the green pumpkin brown. And you can guys can get racks built up that are, you know, your own custom size, make them yourself. It's pretty easy to do with angle iron and some high temp gasket material. Um, and then put some bolts through it. I might make some of them myself soon. I actually have a whole nother rack that I want to put in my oven that will uh, cover the whole cover the whole thing so I get maximum amount of uh, jigs in there that I can. There it's preheated. Boom! The pan inside there because I use a little metal plate that came with it so that I have indirect heat. I don't like having it so that paint can drip down on the heating element. I haven't had any issues with the paint dripping down but I figure one extra step to uh, help prevent anything like that from happening and it came with the oven so why not use it. Try to keep these spaced apart enough to where the, the jigs, when I set them on there and they're rocking like that, that they don't tap each other because the paint will stick to one another. Um, if you have any thin spots on any of the jigs, you can just put a little bit more heat into it and then just sprinkle, sprinkle a little bit of the stardust right back on it. Do this enough, you'll get carpal tunnel <laughs> from your wrist and start So I like to rotate it, and try to put even heat. You can see it getting shiny. It's almost like it's chrome. So it's just right at that point where that lead is going to start to melt. Right at the melting point. So be sure to hit the like though and share it with your friends. There's a lot of people that are still skeptical. Yeah, I can't speak. Yeah. Anyway, that uh aren't sure of what Stardust is and it's kind of new to our market. They've actually been around for 20 years or so so there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of science in this stuff and it's it's been around a long time used a lot more in salt water than fresh water but now they're you know bringing it to the states offering us colors that will work really well for bass fishing and stuff so it's kind of cool and they're always developing new colors sounds like my four year old
sorry about that interruption um so there is a couple of them that that i did i did get it a little thin there's a couple small spots of lead you can kind of see them there in the light so um i'll just leave that pin out i think heat this up just a little bit And sometimes just heating it up you'll actually see that it fills in and you don't need to sprinkle any on it so First one needs a little bit. Like I said, just make sure you're careful and you don't um, burn yourself with a torch, stab yourself with a hook. You know, there's a lot of Messing with a lot of stuff that might not be the safest. So just fill it in with a little bit. It's alright if it's not all melted in. So once we put it in the oven, then we'll be good. So those are hot because they've been sitting up on top of there. So, I'm going to move my rack down here, move the torch out of the way. So then what I do is, yeah, you can scratch this with your fingernail, which is kind of nice because you can just clean up around your hook shank with your fingernail before you heat it up again and then I marked on my jig rack on this side because that's the side that doesn't have the adhesive on because I got tired of trying to guess what side I need to put my jigs on so I'm just going to take this with my finger now just scratch and another beauty of this stuff is, is if you mess up you can take a sharp razor blade, put a cut in it. Most of the time, you can take it, cut it, and then it, you can peel it right off the lid. But it stays more like rubber, so it's really, really impressive stuff because it takes a lot of abuse. You bounce it off rocks. There was a guy on Facebook that was saying that he put this stuff on a sinker to let his kid practice like in the road or the driveway or whatever and uh let him just beat the pain up and apparently from what he said that this stuff didn't even have a scratch in it after he was casting with it pretty much i guess all all morning or something so this it's pretty good stuff So you don't need to clean this stuff up off the hook shank. I just like to. And then if there's paint in the hook eye, this one's fine. But if there's paint in the hook eye, you can heat up a heat up a wire, piece of wire. I got a piece of stainless wire, and then just carefully stick it through there. It's gonna smoke a little bit. Um, try not to inhale it. Use an exhaust system. Do it outside. Let's see. Here stuff that's on there so you don't need to use a sharp razor blade and worry about cutting yourself that's not what that's from but yeah figured I would mention that I 
didn't just cut myself. So I could put more than this on this rack. We didn't make it enough to do it all, but we're just gonna roll with it. I figured I'd try to fill up a couple racks, but I just wanted to get the video going and it's kind of repetitive, but you guys might hear some things. That's why I say you should watch the whole video. When you're watching these videos, because you know, I could be halfway through the video and then you get some helpful information that you missed at the beginning. But there's a lot of people that only watch the first two or three minutes and then they move on to the next thing and they could have could have uh, learned a couple more things if they would have just uh, kept watching the video. So like I said, the Teflon pins, they just slide it out. That hole's open, there's no missing paint. And I'm just gonna go like that, clean this stuff back. You just gotta be careful not to stab yourself. This stuff only takes a couple minutes. Apparently they just decided to play with the dog upstairs. So, sorry about all the extra noise. I should have made this room soundproof, I guess. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask, whether it's here on YouTube or or uh, Facebook or whatever. Just if you guys want to know something, if you guys are having problems with the Stardust paint or whatever, I'm always willing to try to help. Or maybe I'll shoot another another tutorial to show how to do it. Maybe there's something you want to know how to do that I haven't tried before and I'll I'll tinker with it until until I master it and then uh, share it with you all. So So always feel free to ask questions. There's really no such thing as a stupid question because it's just the way I look at it is a question that goes unasked is is a stupid question because you're not going to get any answers if you don't ask. So now, so you got all these that are not shiny. I'm not going to move the camera. I just show you real time. I'm going to drop these in so there's what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I should have used that last, that tenth pin that I had. And we would have been better off. So, 400 degrees. This one, there's a few that are kind of the same way. They're more textured. We're gonna make them nice and smooth right now. So, put them in there. And then what I like to do is use another light. Sometimes you use the light on my phone. But right now I'm using my phone to uh, record, record the video, so work too well. So I'm just gonna take this tripod light and I'm gonna lay it on the side because it's actually too tall. There's a light inside there but it's not really bright enough to see what's going on. And what you're looking for is 
the the jigs will get smooth. You know, there, there won't be any of the like matte finish like these. This is kind of a matte finish. That'll go away. They'll get shiny and smooth. So it doesn't take very long at all. If you wanted to, you could clean the, the paint off of the uh, hook eyes just as easy as what I did with my finger now before you put them in the oven. And this is what you end up with, all this stuff. So, there's honestly not that much waste if you heat it up and just dip, dip the lead and try not to get as much on the hook shanks. And then if you're using <clears throat> something with a, a um, 90 degree, 90 degree type jig hook, you know, so it has an exposed eye, you can use these high temp silicone caps or use um, shrink tubing and just slip a little piece over that before you heat it up put this over it and then dip it if you try to heat it up with this on there you tend to burn the high temp silicone cap in here we're almost done So it takes way less time than 20 minutes to get these ready. So if I had this whole oven filled up full, all a bunch of racks in there, put them all in there, close it up after it's preheated, um, it's way less than 20 minutes. I mean, because you could make, depending on the size of your oven, you can do hundreds of them, depending on the size of the jigs. This whole video is probably going to be under 20 minutes. No, no, it's over. I was talking a little bit, so. Alright, I think those are done. They all look pretty shiny. So I'll hit the I don't have my own mitts going here. I'll pull these out. Make them look great. So. They're very hot though. If you touch them, it is like hot glue. It'll stick you, stick to you really, really bad, and it stays attached to you, and it burns like crazy. So, you got a nice shiny finish. I'll set these up here real quick. The, the rack will take a little bit longer to cool down, but. Try to try to get a better angle. And like I said, please like, comment, share, subscribe. If you've got any questions? Feel free to ask.